All right, we're live with Clara Polito. Hi, I'm Clara from Clara Cakes. Today, my first cookbook comes out, and I'm very excited to share with you my favorite, one of my favorite recipes from this cookbook, which is the Samoa cake. It's kind of my take on the Samoa Girl Scout cookie. So it's a fluffy coconut cake with toasted coconut, and then a coconut caramel frosting with toasted coconuts also inside and then drizzled with a chocolate sauce. So let's get started making it. That sounds so delicious. It's amazing. It's just perfectly sweet and I love the caramel. Um, so first I'm actually going to stir together the coconut milk that I actually used from a can. Um, just because that way it's, it's always like the most fresh and it's not watery. And I'm actually adding in coconut vinegar. What is coconut vinegar? It's actually going to be our egg substitute for today. It's a lot like apple cider vinegar. Um, and it definitely, it kind of binds like an egg would. And it makes for a really fluffy, delicious cake. And I just love using coconut vinegar to complete the coconut cake. Cool. Okay. So I'm just going to give this a good whisk until it's kind of foamy. And totally combine. Blue Red says hi. Hello, thanks for joining in. And there's also someone tuning in from Pakistan. Wow, that's really cool. What time is it there? I always wonder, what's the time difference? We'll have to Google that later. So I'm actually gonna set aside the coconut milk and the coconut vinegar so it can curdle together and really get combined. Um, it's kind of like making a vegan buttermilk. Cool. Um, so while that is curdling, I'm gonna sift the all-purpose flour and this is two and a half cups flour and this was actually a cup of coconut milk and then uh, one tablespoon of coconut vinegar and for the people just tuning in what are you making again samoa cake just like the girl scout cookies but in cake version oh my gosh okay so there is the two and a half cups flour and here is two tablespoons baking powder and then two teaspoons baking soda and half a teaspoon salt. And keep in mind I'm doubling this recipe so I can have a delicious two layer nine inch cake and feed lots of people. So I'm just gonna give this a good sift. And I Check like to- it out girl. Yeah, look at that. And I like to sift these ingredients because it makes the cake lighter and also um, the baking soda clumps get all, all thin and you don't have clumps in your cake which you don't Okay, cool. So now that this is sifted, I'm going to whisk together the vegan butter. And I use Earth Balance. It works just like normal butter. And then melted coconut oil. And normally I use a stand mixer for this step, but today I'm just going to do it by hand. So that's why I really like to use both of these ingredients melted. Can I come over so, here? Hold on. All right, girl, go. So this is half a cup Earth Balance vegan butter mm -hmm. and then half a cup of coconut oil. Someone just asked if baking powder and baking soda is the same or not. Can you? Not the same. <laughs> That's enough. So baking soda kind of makes everything spread apart while baking powder kind of lifts everything up and makes it lighter and fluffier. Good to know. Yeah. So I like baking soda and cookies, baking powder and cake. Mm -hmm. And here is a... Uh, two cups of sugar. So I'm just going to stir that in. Is that just regular sugar? Uh, yeah, just regular cane sugar. I like to use organic, mm -hmm. so it's not bleached or anything. It's your workout for the day. Oh yeah. What Bodies, is your favorite? All this upper body strength. <laughs> what is your favorite workout routine since you're baking all the time? Um, I think I really like to run because, you know, then I, I'm not really focused on one thing because with baking I'm always focused on just one particular step. But running I can just kind of do my thing and not worry so much. Cool. So I'm going to kind of mix this together till the sugar seems really incorporated into the oils. That way it's not grainy. Familia's turning in from Puerto Rico. How's it in Puerto in. Rico? That's cool. <laughs> I've never been there before. Okay. So this, this looks pretty good. It looks like the sugar is pretty 
well incorporated into the oils. And now I'm going to add in two tablespoons of vanilla extract. And I love using a lot of vanilla extract because it really complements the coconut flavor of this cake. So this is almost like what you do for a cookie dough. You want to get this kind of caramelly, sugar, butter, vanilla mixture going. Um, so I'm just going to whisk this till the vanilla kind of colors this mixture. the exciting part. You get to put it all, you get to put it all together. All right, are we doing it over here? Yeah, why not? All right. Okay, so since this is the biggest bowl that I have today, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pour in the coconut and soy milk mixture with the coconut vinegar. Oh, and drop my whisk at the same time. Sounds fun. So if you're just tuning in, this is kind of the egg substitute. The coconut vinegar works perfectly with the coconut milk. And what type of cake are we making again? Samoa cake. Yes. It's like my spin on the Girl Scout cookie. But people that are have been watching are probably sick of me hearing that now. <laughs> no, were you ever a Girl Scout? <laughs> was I ever a Girl Scout? Uh-huh. Uh, no. So I think I was maybe envious in a way of never being a Girl Scout. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make a Girl Scout cake. All right. And it's super delicious. And I like it instead of doing thin mint cookies or cupcakes, because it's just a more unique flavor. So I'm just gonna grab my spatula and whisk, or stir everything together. And I'm gonna do this until it's totally smooth. Just give it a whirl. Hmm. Tell us more about your cookbook. Well, today's a really big day because it comes out, um, well, it just came out today. Um, but it's all vegan recipes. I've been baking since I was 12, I'm 19 now. And so it's seven years worth of memories and recipes and so many photos on every page. And I just, it's a really unique cookbook. As soon as you open it, it's totally alive with colors and Cool flowers and fonts. And is it just recipes or like what else is in there? Uh, beyond recipes, there are dance playlists, baking playlists, because um, I like to combine the two. And then even some dessert haikus that my best friend wrote oh. that are hilarious. Um, I actually have one hanging up there that says, I see my haters, watch out when my timer sounds, I'm going to take the cake. That's hilarious. All right, back to the All batter. Right, back to the batter. So I think that this looks pretty good. You don't want to over mix it because then your cake will become a little too gooey and not fluffy. Mm -hmm. So now I'm actually going to fold in four cups of, or two cups of toasted coconut. All right. And I like to toast it because it's really, um, it's more like a genuine Samoa cookie with the toasted coconut. And I just think that when you toast it, the flavor comes out a lot more. So I'm just going to fold it in a little. And it's crazy, as soon as you stir it in, suddenly the batter like comes alive and it just gets even more fluffy. Like all these ingredients are just meant to be together in this delicious coconut cake. Right. And now my oven's preheated to 300. Oh, oh no, runaway whisk. That was sad. That was sad. Anybody can bake. If I can do it, you can do it. Um, so my oven's preheated to 350 degrees, and I already have these cake pans lined with parchment paper, and then oil and flour so that they don't stick to the pan when I take them out of the oven and have the pans. So I'm just going to pour these in evenly. Back to the arm workout. Yep. Thank God I'm really strong and tough, you know. <laughs> this this kitchen has made me a really tough gal. All right, there we go. This is kind of like my breakfast, to be honest, because here in LA it's about 11 o'clock, and I'm actually pretty excited that this is going to be my first complete meal of the day. 
So I've seen some people like tap the bottom of the cake pan to get the air bubbles out. Do you do that too? I kind of do that, but I like to even it out with this. Got it. There aren't any air bubbles in this guy, really. So let's pop them in the oven. And then I like to bake these for about 25 minutes or until they're nice and golden brown. And you always want to make sure that you stick a knife or a toothpick in the center so that you know if the batter is still coming out, then it needs more time. But if it isn't, then they're ready to come out. Okay, so now we're gonna make the frosting. And the frosting is coconut milk base with brown sugar. And so I'm gonna start. Should we follow you over there? Sure. Or are you gonna do it over here? I'm gonna do it over here. All right. So, so I'm gonna pour the coconut milk. And you can heat it before or not. I figure you just kind of heat up the coconut milk in the pot while the heat's on. And then, so this was uh, one cup coconut milk and then two cups brown sugar. I'm gonna grab a handy dandy spatula. <laughs> and then just give it a good stir until both of the ingredients are combined. And then you're gonna let this mixture kind of boil on its own for a little while until it thickens. So it's a lot like making caramel where you keep it under a medium heat till it becomes nice and thick and delicious. So where did you think, like how did you think of this recipe? Um, I think I was just kind of inspired honestly by Girl Scout cookies and I kind of like it because it's like German chocolate cake in a way but a vanilla version and there are no walnuts and I'm like I do like walnuts, but if I could have a coconut caramel glaze with more coconut than walnuts, that's what I would choose. So I kind of made like a vanilla version of German chocolate cake. Cool. Yeah, and it's also Girl Scout season right now, so it's really fun to make them in spirit of the Girl Scout. And when did you start baking? I started baking when I was 12, that's so seven so years young. ago. Oh my goodness. Okay, so while this is cooking, I'm going to stir together the soy milk and cornstarch mixture, and that will eventually go into the brown sugar. Uh, and that helps thicken it and almost create like a pudding-like texture. So that's the base of the frosting. So I'm just gonna grab that. Take a peek in here. Oh, it's starting to get dark. Yeah. I love the dark amber color. Okay, so here is two cups soy milk, and then six tablespoons cornstarch, and half a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to grab a little fork. So you don't always have to have a whisk on hand. <laughs> a fork works just right. Just going to get all the cornstarch in. And one more time for the people just tuning. Okay, so it's a toasted coconut cake layer, and then with the coconut caramel frosting with more toasted coconut, and then a chocolate crunch to cake, which is sometimes unusual, but I find it super delicious. Breakfast of champions. Yes, absolutely. So you just want to mix together the soy milk and cornstarch until the cornstarch clumps kind of go away. That way you don't have like grainy cornstarch in your frosting because who wants that? Not me. So I'm actually going to do a little multitasking. Um, while this brown sugar and coconut milk is kind of thickening up on its own with this heat. I'm gonna pop in coconut flakes and I'm gonna grab that. <laughs> oh, she's back. Here we go, and I'm back. So, I like to pop that in for about three minutes. Just keep your eyes peeled because coconut flakes can burn really fast. Alex says, Ola. Hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's in there. 
this is cooking. So I'm just waiting for this to really boil together. And you'll notice when it starts to get more caramel-like. And as soon as it is kind of a caramel, you want to stir in the soy milk and cornstarch. So tell us more about Clara Cakes, which is your business. Clara Cakes started basically out of love for my baking and my hobby. And um, I became vegan and couldn't find delicious desserts anywhere. Um, so it was kind of out of necessity in a way. And then I started selling at different music shows and art shows and found my customers through that and then started selling to a couple different shops. Cool. So where do you sell to in LA? In LA, I sell Pizza Nista, Osla Vegan, and Cruiser Pizza. So those are all downtown in Las Feliz. Yeah. And then we've got a viewer asking if they can add honey to this recipe at all. Um, I don't, I mean, I guess if you're subbing sugar for honey, I don't use honey. I would use agave instead, but that's just me. <laughs> Um, but that's the cool thing about this cookbook. You can take it and make it your own and, you know, infuse different flavors you like. Like, in this cake, you can make, you could add nuts to it if you want. Um, you could even do this in cupcake form if you're kind of crunched for time because cakes do take a while to make. Ooh. Okay, so this has a nice foil going. And this is always exciting because when sugar and coconut milk start to boil like this, you know that the thickening is coming. And it's just like a big old science experiment. Right. And then I'm gonna do some even more, even more multitasking. I'm gonna make the chocolate drizzle right now, because you might as well just you know, use up your stove while you can, not be in the heat too long. So, here is a quarter cup of soy milk. And, I'm gonna put that on low heat. Okay, and it looks like this guy is totally thickening up. So I'm gonna lower the heat. And this is on the caramel sauce. It smells so good. I know, oh my god. I wish you guys could smell it. I wish there was like a smellogram. You know? <laughs> I think pretty soon. I remember somebody commented on one of my photos saying that they wish there was a scratch and sniff feature on Instagram. And I think that's absolutely brilliant. Your next business. Yeah, I know, huh? Yeah, if anybody wants to uh, invest in that idea, I think it's a multi-billion dollar idea. Okay, so this is just getting there. And then this is, again, to remind you, the soy milk for the chocolate drizzle. And I'm gonna cook this until it just starts to boil. And then afterwards, I'm gonna stir in the chocolate chips. And that is a cup of bittersweet or semi-sweet chocolate chips. And I prefer the vegan brand because I bake everything vegan. Okay, so. I'm gonna stir the soy milk and cornstarch mixture into the caramel mixture. I'm just gonna get this one more whisk. Because sometimes the cornstarch gathers at the bottom. So you just wanna make sure that you get it all. long to thicken but maybe give it a, like three or four minutes and then you know it's done when it kind of looks like pudding in a way maybe a little less thick than pudding but just about 